Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, you know who I am. <laughs> but yeah, we back with another episode. You know, I got my homeboy coming to the spot. You know, you know had reached out to me. You know, wanted to be a part of that show. So I say, you know, let's do it. Let's get it popping. You know, like I said, it's just, it's just amazing. Everything that I accomplished at a short period of time. And I know it's, about to be 2022 but hey you know I'm I'm blessed just the amount of love that people give me and the amount of support you know everybody came and showed love you know I wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for my supporters and my listeners and my viewers you know We already working on volume two of the mixtape. So make sure that y'all, you know, keep on getting my views up on my YouTube channel and make sure that y'all, you know, give me some nice positive feedback because I worked my behind off it. So it was six months in the making. So make sure y'all you know, show me some love on that one. But yeah, our guest had just made it into the spot. You know, trying to get get bro up in here. But yeah, we um we working, you know, hundred miles of running and stuff. And I can't wait to hear what he got to say, cause we really um you know just been talking about some things, um inboxing each other, so I know he got a lot to say. Let's see if I can get him in here. But yeah, bro, I see you. I see you in here. Trying to bring you in. You know, check your messages. I just messaged you, bro. But yeah, you know, like I said, um, I just so happy, man. I just want to thank everybody for supporting me, man. Like, it's just wonderful, y'all. I won't make it this far. So I ain't do none of this. It was God. It was God. It was my peoples. It was my fans. So none of this is me. But on further ado, let me bring him on the platform real quick. <laughs> oh man, I was just getting messages. My feet was crazy. I'm trying to bring him back on here. Um,
Now, shout out to all my viewers, man. You know, we just trying to fix this technical problem, but it's going to work. It's going to. Because we're going to bring him in here. We're just trying to fix this thing so we can get this started. Because I really want to hear what he got to say. Okay. He's here, hopefully. Hopefully this works. Please let it work. Okay. What's up, bro? <laughs> Finally, man. What's up, though? What's up, man? I, I don't know what's going on with that, man. That's that 2021 technology, man. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Yeah, man. What's good, though, man? Man, nothing, man. So I just, you know, I can't wait to get you on the show, man, and yeah. hear what you got to say, man, because no, really I was just, just... Oh, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. Go ahead, bro. No, I was just saying, like, you know, the suspense was killing me, you know, because I, I, was... <laughs> I like to meet new people, man, and it was right. It was touching that you reached out to me, so. I I'm just, just... I see what you're doing, and you know what I'm saying, and, like, with everything that to be going on around here and you know what I'm saying, just growing up around here, you know what I'm saying? Somebody need to I feel like somebody need to step on your platform and speak something real for the city. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Some bit some unity. You know what I'm saying? Build something up. Some because you know you got a lot of youth watching you too, bro, whether you know it or not. Oh yeah, man, this is what it's about, man. It's just uh you know, it's just the show that us OGs, man, that we ain't out here, you know, doing a whole bunch of stupid and crazy ignorant stuff, man. Some of us actually about something. We care about the next generation. So that's why I created this platform so people can actually see the human in us and stuff. Right. Like some people around here. But right. I already respect you, man. You know, just uh, the fact that you wanted to you know, come and, you know, speak about your experiences, man. So let's get right. it popping, man. You know, <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, man, you know, shoot. Well, you know, I, I born and raised Saginaw, Michigan. I've been, you know, been my whole life. Moved out of town for a little while in Indiana, working mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying, trying to do better and back and forth. I got family here, there. You know what I'm saying? Just growing up here, bro, it's it's different, man. And it took for me to leave here and go somewhere else and actually see how it is. You know what I'm saying? And how I feel. It's just like, it's totally different growing up here, man. And it's so small. We feel like, it's like crabs in a bucket around here. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, you know, like when you growing up around here, it's like, it's only two things. People, people can be anything they want to be, but it's only two things they see here. It's either they're going to pick up a ball or they gonna turn to the streets. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like nobody else sees another vision, and that's why I be wanting to speak on it and be wanting to like, you got like when I stepped outside of here and seen different, it made it showed me different. Like I can be different. I can do different things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Living around, it's just different living here. Like just for example, the police around here. Being around here, it's like when we see the state boys, what everybody in Saginaw say. If you driving and you see them and they hit that U-turn, bro, what's the first thing we say around here? <laughs> oh, oh, I see. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. yeah. You know, me being out of town, I'm with some, some of my guys from out of town, right? Mm -hmm. And they police, you know what I'm saying? They state police come and he turn and do the same thing. They still in the car normal. I'm in the car panicking like a motherfucker. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They looking at me like, what's wrong with you? That again goes with 
where I come from, where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, man. It's for like, real. It's like this city is something so different, bro. But I, I love my city and I love my people, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad to be from here. But it's just we gotta open our third eye, the whole city. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I see it starting to happen, like with everybody like starting to try to do different things. You know what I'm saying? People get into music, people got clothing line, clothing stores. I like I, I love to see that. You know what I'm saying? I love to see it uh, bring a different tone to the city than just what it's known for and what it comes from. You get what I mean? You know oh, what absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, but like, it's just crazy though when you step out of here and you, and you, you put this, you put this in, you got like, you've been born bred here, you go somewhere else, it feels, it's a different vibe. You get what I'm saying? And they like how, like, I went to, like, I went out down there. I'm from here. So I'm just like, I'm just waiting to like, something to go down you know what i mean but down there it was like you know it was different vibe it's just it's it's different here bro you know what i'm saying and growing up here it's hard man like i ain't gonna need a lot it's hard to grow up in saginaw bro i worry for my kids every day growing up here to get peer pressure in the this or that or people going off the stories of me as a younger you know as a younger me you know i was kind of rough and in the you know in the streets and hands-on with a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying? I had to learn, and when I had kids, I had to learn and walk a different path. You get what I'm saying? But I still worry for my kids every day. You know what I'm saying? From what I did growing up, and you know, people get in your ear and say say things to your child and stuff to your kid that you really won't want them. You know, you want you ain't raising them like that, but they think because oh you this or you that that you gonna say that to my child. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that and that could that could trigger a child to get involved and get around here and get in the you know seeing all this madness going on around here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like when I see shit here, like youth doing shit to each other, like shootings and certain shit, I kind of feel bad because I feel like shit. I played a role in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Over time, growing up and, and being involved in that shit. I never know what little shorty seen me when I was when I was a shorty. It was always somebody under you. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. Somebody younger than you. So I don't know what they seen. You know what I'm saying? And they could have picked up whatever they seen me do, and they could be out here doing some shit. You know what I'm saying? And that and that make me as a person feel bad. So I feel like I should be speaking up and trying to help bring my community up. You know what I'm saying? Like put start investing more money in the stuff for youth. And you know what I'm saying? Because that's our future, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We Right now, we are where our elders used to talk to us and be like, you know, one day you're going to get to be my age. One day, you know what I'm saying? It's a trend. It's, it's the stairs. You know what I'm saying? We right here on the stairs. In a minute, they're going to be right here where we at. And if we show them nothing, imagine the generation under them, what 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 the world will look like. I just, I, would, I hate to see it, bro. That's a scary thought. <laughs> Man, you ain't never lied because, you know, even when I was coming up, it was just always somebody that was just motivating me and pushing me for, you know, for greatness. And right. these OGs now, man, they more childish than the young niggas now, man. And it's <laughs> sad because, you know, it's 40-year-olds that still got ops around here, man. And I'm just like... <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like, nigga, oh, you you got grandchildren out here. You still got ops, you know? Man, you still bro. out here bullshitting. Like, I'm thirty four. I'm about to be thirty four, bro. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm about to be thirty four. And when I tell you, you know, growing up, and I grew up on the south side and everything like that. Right on. You know, even though we had, you know, our people in the street and stuff like that. They had mm -hmm. good hearts. They was human beings. You know, I remember, you know, rest in peace to my OG fat daddy, man. I was like around like eight, nine years old outside. Every time the ice cream truck came by, he always bought all of his ice cream. He always yeah. bought stuff from the, from the store. He always gave us money. I and so, that. you know, so when he died, you know, that hurt me and right. stuff like that. So every time his birthday, his anniversary come, I always shout him out, man. But right. we don't have those type of influencers anymore. Even though they was doing dirt, they won't want you to fall into their footsteps. Mm -mm. It's like now, 
it's like now that's why i say like growth bro because it's like now you got them same people around here but instead of handing you a dollar for candy i'm gonna give you this gun or i'm gonna give you this pack mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying for, i'm gonna give you something that's gonna make you a hundred dollars you can buy the fucking ice cream truck if you want to you know what i'm saying that's, yeah but that's people look at that like that's cool but you 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 destroying the community worse than what it is bro you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but not knowing though if you give them the right knowledge and the proper game they can be something greater than that you know what i'm saying than a than a than a, than a bag or a pistol you know what i'm saying you can motivate them to be something greater than that bro and like with the way the world is now bro that's what time it is bro you know what I'm saying? It's time for it's time for us as black people to start owning and doing a lot of shit on our own, bro. Mm -hmm. Because it's starting to it's starting to divide, bro. If you you paint, you know what I'm saying? It's starting yeah. to divide. Way worse than it ever been. You know what I'm saying? Us is look at us as a lot of us black people. I know some of us got vaccinated, some of us didn't. And it's like they making it for the people that didn't. We're not gonna be able to go in grocery stores. We're not gonna be able to do, you know what I'm saying? And it's mostly in our black community. So us as black people, we need to build our own stores. We need to have our own everything, gas stations, schools. You get what I'm saying? That's yeah. What, like, like that's what time it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll never forget what I, where I come from and what I was and, and where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, it's time to bring us together as a whole, bro. Oh, I agree. And it's, it, and there's also... It's just time that we begin to learn our history too, man. Cause we used to have all of that. Everything that you said, we used to have all of that. But, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Genesee Street was mm -hmm. black owned. Yeah, black owned, bro. Pine shops, car washes, restaurants, everything. It was all black owned. You know what I'm saying? And now look at it. It's it's a it's an eyesore, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, shout out to the couple businesses that's still there holding it down. There's yeah. still some black owned businesses. Brother Arthur's, uh, you know, my man Terry Reed got his tire shop right there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's a couple more black owned businesses around there, but it really ain't what it used to be, bro. No. You know like what the, I mean? Like the Fort Saginaw Mall, man. It's 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 crazy because I I was a shorty when that was operating, so I didn't really get the chance to fully experience the the place like that. Right. But I remember all that. You know, we had our own mall, we had an arcade and you know, we had stores, shopping stores, department stores and oh, all that man. stuff. And and I just think that it's so easy for people to leave here, but it's hard for people to put their money together. Cause everybody always talking about that they got this money, so much money here. <laughs> but then you don't want to like you know build a community center you don't want to you know volunteer you don't want to you know sponsor like a uh um you know what i'm saying au football basketball team and stuff but right but you cashing out on this stuff that's not going to be relevant you know you can't take um fasashi gucci louis right. Vuitton when you die right but you can take that legacy with you right you know, right. and that's yeah. the thing um, with this platform, because I wanted it to be just our, our thing, because everybody always questioned me, like, man, you never have any white people or Mexican people or it's not <laughs> multicultural. And I'm just saying, like, um, why can't we just have something for ourselves? Like, since, right. <laughs> since since people have took everything that we created and invented and had right you know this is the best way to understand black people you know if you ask me you know because right. they think they know us so much but they don't you know because it was funny well it, it wasn't funny but um when the george floyd stuff was happening um i was i was at work mm -hmm. and this asian lady um, she's a doctor or whatever. You know, she had came up to me and she was like, you know, wow, like I never understood what y'all go through. And I was like, well, 
did you understand it before or you didn't care? You know, I'd rather for you not to care. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For you to blow smoke up my ass, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. come on, like, we, you know, I'm a grown man. Like, I'm cool, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's just that a lot of different races don't understand what we go through, man, because we always had it the hardest. We always pretty much, you know, being born here because mm -hmm. we have it so hard to the fact that they lied about our history they yeah. lied a lot about where we came from and a lot yeah. of us was wow. already over here and yeah. i tell them and i'll be telling niggas who be wearing these dashikis and you know <laughs> want to go to africa so bad i'm like that's not those not your people no you know we was here we was already over here yeah and and, and, and they tell you that on your family tree they tell you that your family records and your the census records they tell you all of that right because people don't know about prototypes and you can look like some people doesn't mean you're the same people a chinese right. person a japanese person a thailand person um vietnamese people they can they, have the same features they all look alike yeah it doesn't mean they're the same people like i challenge anybody to tell a chinese person like you're korean they will whoop fuck you. <laughs> will I mean, that's just ass. like at the store. That's just like the Arabs and Indians. Mm -hmm. A lot of people go in the store. They like them damn Arabs, them Arabs, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and they like, bro, I'm Indian, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. Bro, I, I know what you said, man. Yeah, I know where you coming from with that? Yeah. yeah, and it's just and it's time that we claim back our lineage. It's time that we claim back our heritage because they use that, you know, took our land. They took our um, native tongue. They took our spirituality, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They took our minds. We're, they trying to, they taking our women, everything. Man. Yeah, because they know, because they know who we are, you know what I'm saying? But we don't know who we are as a collective, but if we all, you know what I'm saying, began to do the work, because it's gonna it's gonna be work. And it's gonna yeah. and it's gonna hurt your feelings, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna break your heart when you find yeah. out that damn, like I've been you know, told my whole life that my roots is in Africa, but this whole time, man, like right here. <laughs> this whole time. Look what they did to the Indians. They stole everything from them. Yeah, I guess they must have felt bad for them, and they give them a check every every uh month. <laughs> but I'll tell you this though, um, the Indians of today wasn't the originals. No, they wasn't. You know what I'm saying? They know that. You know what I'm saying? They paid five dollars yeah. to be Indians, yeah. man. And it's just what kills me is that um, you know, you you have like. These um, DNA tests and stuff like that—that that was created um, by foreigners. You know, people that came over here. They, they right. was the only ones that came off a boat over here. We ain't never came off no boat, you know. And I just be telling people this, and they be thinking I'm crazy. They're like, "Oh man!" And I understand that indoctrination is powerful. You know, the spell right. is powerful, right? But but a lot of us waking up, man, a lot of us is really um, not falling for the curriculum that was taught to us. Because mm -hmm. the real school starts when you graduate, man. Because there's certain it things ain't written on paper. School, I was just going to say that school never, school to me, when I got out, well, got out whatever was going on in school, it never really prepared me for the real world at all. You know what I mean? Like, at all. To me, school mo institutionalized me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it felt like it felt like schooling was like preparing me for jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I went to jail. <laughs> I went to jail. I was in the county with these fools. I said, "Damn, man, this shit feel like we in high school again." You know what I'm saying? Right, detention. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's like that shit ain't that school ain't prepared me for what's out here in the world. No. You know what I'm saying? And when they tell you shit at school, they put a limit on shit. When you mm -hmm. out here and you free, it's no limit to what you can do, bro. You know what I mean? 
And they, yeah. it's, it's like they put a fucking, it's like they put a limit on what you could be, what you could do. If you say some shit that's out of, out like out of, out of, like out of character to them, you might say you want to do some shit that's out of character. And they might be like, oh no, you can't do that. You might as well be a doctor or a lawyer or, you know what I'm saying? It's so much more shit you can be and do and be highly successful. Yeah, it's like they they make you become criminals because what I tell when I tell people is that Malcolm X or whatever he wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. It was his teacher who shot down his dream and told him that excuse me <coughs> that um a lawyer is unrealistic for a, a nigger, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, be a comforter, you know, you good with your hands and this and that. And yeah. that led him down a path of crime because he was so discouraged by his teacher, his favorite teacher told yeah. him this. So just imagine if Michael Max would have been a lawyer, he would have been one of the greatest lawyers, greatest lawyers ever. Cause ever. he had it. He, he just, you know, yeah. always had that all oh, charisma, man. And, yeah. And that's the thing, like, you know, just with these parents, man, they really need to really get involved with their kids because that's they true. be thinking that, you know, a lot of them have behavior problems, be having attitude problems. You don't know what these teachers are telling your kids. Right. Especially you know here. Mm -hmm. Especially here with Saginaw and our school system, bro. That shit ain't even right to me. Like, it just, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really understand it. It's I like, don't how many times have I been to school and, the, you know, the class might be acting up and shit and the teacher say, well, I'm just here for a paycheck. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? I've actually heard them say that out their mouth. I've actually seen physical altercations in school where a person get the shit whooped out of them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that teacher sit there like, hey, that ain't my job. Call security. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, and that shit happen here a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right here in our backyard, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, that's why I say like the topic we talking about just growing up here, mm -hmm. it's so different. You know what I'm saying? And we so like our opportunity is so not fair here, bro. From this little small city, bro. You know what I'm saying? Our opportunity ain't really that fair here, bro. We taking away school districts shutting down schools here you know what i'm saying yeah we need them we need them schools bro yeah you know what i'm saying like that's that's taking away tradition and everything like they closed buna vista that's taking away tradition heritage all that you know what i mean because that whole like that whole township that whole end over there they all went to them schools and stuck together you get what i'm saying yeah so that's like that's important that's important things bro and they and they destroying the schools to do what? Put money into these raggedy ass roads that we already been had. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Cumberland ain't been fixed yet. <laughs> Man, never. That's the horrible street. Like I done bust so many fucking rims riding down Cumberland, <laughs> and ain't get a dime for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. But they keep these. Then they keep these old ass buildings up. That they've been here for so many years. I mean, okay, yeah, they ancient and all that shit, but they don't hold no value. Like, y'all don't got nothing in here. Nobody going in here. This motherfucker boarded up. Been boarded up for sixty years. But yeah. you don't see them. You don't see them tearing that down. But they'll be quick to go over here and let's look at right there on right there on, in the hood on Carroll. They tore down. They tore down the school over there. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? The Civitan. Mm -hmm. They tore that down, bro. Halfway, but they still they tow it down, bro. Now I can take you on downtown up the street, a building that been there and been an eyesore for I don't know how many years. They ain't touched the brick on it, bro. Yeah, and, and there's so much like gentrification going on, man. Cause yeah. when they did when they did the Eddie building and the um Bancroft, man, that was so disrespectful, bro. Like <laughs> how the hell can you just Go in somebody's house and then tell them, okay. They got to go. You got to go. You, you got to go. And you got this yep. amount of time to go. And we don't care where you go. You can be out on the street. You know what I'm saying? That's just like, but that, that shit, shit like that, bro, 
it only it seemed like it only really happened here, bro. And that's mm -hmm. terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at look at Hidden Hollow. All them people out there in them apartments got put out in less than a week. You know what I'm saying? The, the unstable living conditions, this and that. All these, all these tenants, all these people. You mean to tell me that no money was pumped back into these apartments? And majority of them is what, bro? Minority. Mm -hmm. Us. They don't do. They ain't gonna do. They ain't gonna take that shit out there with them white people. You know what I'm saying? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. You know what I'm saying? And and they building could be horrible in worse condition than this, but just because they white, we're not gonna throw them out. We're gonna try to build for them. It's all, man, it's just, it's whole, it's like, it's rough here, bro. Even our courthouse and our court system are judges. Like, I look at, I look at Clark, you know what I'm saying? He's been on the bench for a long time. But it's a lot of shit he do to our black brothers and sisters around here that really is just like, I can't dig that. I don't feel that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The way, yeah. he, the way he do these people over these tickets and little shit like that, like, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? If you if I'm a black judge and I'm up here, bro, and you in here for a ticket, bro, and you struggling, I'm gonna try to give you a chance to, to you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna straight just hit you with either pay or stay. You institutionalizing your own people over small shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's crazy, bro. It's like I'm telling you, growing up and staying here, man, you see a lot of different, it's it's a lot of crazy shit, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's hard within itself, just growing, living here and staying here. Everyday life here in Saginaw is hard. So everybody out there that's watching, you should be patting yourself on the back if you getting by day by day around here. Because the way it's set up for us here in this little ass town, no good, bro. They took away all, like they really took away our opportunities when we had all these plants and it was plentiful here and people wanted to bring their family here. They killed that. Yeah. And that's when you see us as blacks, we're going to run to the streets. We're going to get it by any means. You got a family to take care of. So now you see the crime rate shoot up through the roof. Or when we get something good going, what they come do, bro? They come shut it down. They come take it away from us. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. This, this, is, this is what we forced to live with every day, bro. And then us as black men, I hate like, I used to be like that, but I kind of, I kind of let it go. But us as black men, bro, the way we see each other, you know what I'm saying? When we in the store and shit, mm -hmm. you got to watch you, you got to watch me. We don't even know each other, but we looking at each other, waiting for it to be a situation instead of he might have an outlet for a source that you need to get here. I might have an outlet for a source for you. You know what I'm saying? I need to get here. Right. And right. Instead of thinking like that and building, we thinking about war as soon as we see each other, bro. And that's terrible, bro. And that shit happens here, bro. Like, I'd have been all out of state. They don't think like that, bro. They come to you first and want to build. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? These niggas want to build. And me being, me and the way the city made me, I was kind of rough toward them. They like, yeah, this nigga kind of rough. You know what I'm saying? They was kind of cautious. <laughs> right. Fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, again, that come from my habitat, my element, where I'm from. Mm-hmm. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it, and and you're right, cause um, when you try to do something, and then when you try to start like a business and stuff, man, your own people already counting you out. Like the people that you grew up with, people that you lived around, you know, the corner, across the yep. bridge. Knew you your whole you life. Out. Yeah, they already counting you out. You know, talking don't about. See you. Mm -mm, don't don't want to see you win. Don't want to see you win. Don't want to see you add nothing. It, that's, that's terrible. And that happened here a lot, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, you can go down, look at look at it in Atlanta, bro. Like, far as like they movement with music, bro. All them niggas support each other down there. You know what I'm saying? They, they they built they built it, they built that motherfucker together. You know what I'm saying? Look at remember the BET awards and shit, hip hop awards and shit. When that when people from Atlanta would perform, you would see the whole Atlanta on stage. Yeah. At one. You know what I'm saying? We like with the system and the way we was brought up around here and the way shit is, we a lot a lot here is divided, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and it's like to me, 
it's just crazy because Saginaw is nothing but one big side of town, like in a large city. But yeah, we have all these games and all these, you know, people who want to fight and shoot each other. Like, you know, 30 minutes you to roll through the whole city. <laughs> You put, you put $10 in your car depending on the size of your car, my nigga. And you can ride through the whole sack. You know what I'm saying? You can ride through this whole motherfucker, bro. Just take this motherfucker up Genesee and go down. And then when you come around, turn, you're going to go a big-ass circle, be right back in your driveway. Exactly. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what I don't understand is that, you know, especially like, especially like with the music and the, the entrepreneurship, man, we have so many talented people. We have so many like people growing. We do. We do. I give us that. We do. We Man. Do. We have a lot of talented people here, bro. But it just be people just be haters just because like here you they hate on you for the dumbest shit around here. Man, exactly. Man. I mean, fuck that nigga. I remember in third grade, that nigga, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Like, man, you fucking 40 years old. You telling me back in the third grade? Let that shit go, man. Support support that man and what he got going on. You know what I mean? It's exactly, man. And what I don't understand is that they don't respect growth. Like, you got people already, like, hating on you and... You know what I'm saying? Like when somebody like you, you know what I'm saying? Somebody respects you and everything. Like, oh, oh, don't fuck with that nigga, man. That nigga had so many hoes back in the day. Oh, he doing this, he doing that. And I'm just like, um, damn, I can grow up. I can change. Like, I ain't going to be like y'all forever. Uh, right. Because I seen how they did my cousin, Chuck, man. Chuck Rogers, bro. I seen them how they, yeah. how they did him, man. Shout out to Chuck, man. Yeah, rest in peace, man, because he was real. Like, Yeah, he cause, was. Because he did a lot, you know what I'm saying? I grew up seeing him in the neighborhood. Like, I used to be down on 9th and Carroll, and I would see him pulling up on 7th and Carroll with the Benz truck, changing colors, you know what I'm saying? And he was just, he was like, he was cool, bro. Like, he was real laid back down to earth, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Did a lot for people. I heard he did a lot of good things. Yeah, he did. And but it's sad to see that when he, you know when he went through what he went through, he didn't really have nobody to turn to, bro. It was kind of like they kicked him, kicked him to you know what I'm saying, kicked him to the side of the road, bro. Oh man, I, and it's because I didn't know what he was going through because I was pretty much a teenager, like back when he was like in his heyday. You know, mm -hmm. so when I finally got the chance to see his ESPN interview and really, you know, seen it in his eyes, all he wanted was somebody to love him. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point where his health declined and I didn't know that he was even sick like that, you know, and yeah, it really bothered me. And I said that I'm not going to let Saginaw use me when I blow up. Right. <laughs> use, they will use you, you know, if right. you're not careful. Yeah. And, and it just what kills me is that, you know, he get a scholarship after he died. You know, where was the scholarship when he was able to, you know, take the Except picture? It. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that pissed me off to, to the core because it's like, you know, even with me, um, I, I've been trying to get a article. I, I've been trying to get a story through him live mm -hmm. for for months. So they told me in order for me to get my article or get my story, I'm going to have to change my name of my business. And I told them, hell no, I ain't changing nothing. Because <laughs> first of all, if let me rob a bank, let me do the, some, you know, crazy I right. would be front page news like eighteen oh four um host. <laughs> right. <laughs> they couldn't wait to use that name. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's so, crazy, man. Yeah, I would be front page news and I already know. You know, and, and that's, that's, that's that. another sign of them trying to control, bro. Trying to control, you know what I'm saying? You can't control that. You can't tell me what to name my shit. If my shit if you go down in my shit patent and I pay for it and this is my business. 
you ain't, I'm not finna change my name for your article. No, hell no, man, because I'm not selling that's, out. You know, that's where is, you go after them, though, and you take their spot. Oh, man. Um, I have really... Put your own papers out. Do your own, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Of course, of course, man. You know what I'm saying? I, nobody, and they use, and they coming <coughs> up, not to cut you off, but they coming up on us off the black community. Mm-hmm. M Live, like I, I, I watch and read the shit that they put and they say, they go back on like a person could, you got shot and killed. I seen a few guys shot and killed, bro. And they would say like, oh, the family grieving and this and that. And then after that, they would say, but you know, such and such, uh, who had went to jail for five years, got indicted <laughs> on dope charges. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? Like, like what they gotta do with it? <laughs> that's irrelevant. You know what I'm saying? That's that's dirty. That's dirt, bro. And if a black person owned that or had anything to do with that, they would be they, that shit wouldn't go on, bro. No, oh, man. And it, I just think that that's why, you know, we should have our own thing because we so dependent on their outlets to the point mm -hmm. that we don't um see the sincerity of, you know, just giving our best and our brightest their flowers why they still are able right. to receive them because we yeah. have a lot of we have a lot of people that's doing good things for the community it's it's just the fact that they're not popular or they're not known because i ain't known you know what i'm saying i'm a yeah. i'm a lame but i know a lot of people but i'm a lame <laughs> i prefer to be a lame i'll be in the cut man i don't be out here like that bro because yeah because you know well, you got too many haters though man like Man, I, was, I, mm -hmm. I was just brought up. I, I know I know a lot of people, bro, and a lot of people know me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, but when you like that and they know, you know what I'm saying, I try to speak on, you know, real shit and real not. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Keep it real. I ain't know how nobody business. I stay in my own lane. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sometimes, like, I can just hear people bad mouthing other people and I walk away because I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, me either. That ain't, that ain't what I feed off into. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? I, keep, I try to keep all that negative shit away from me, bro. Because that shit fuck with your spirit and you as a person. If you all you if all you're around is negative shit, and you, that's what you're going to soak up in your mind and in your heart. And then you're going to become a negative person and not even know it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You might think the shit you're doing is right, but a person that know you and been knowing you for years can see the change in you and see you turn for the worse. And then as a person, people don't want to listen to other people. They feel like, oh, you hating on me. Oh, you this, oh, you that. You know what I'm saying? But really, a person really trying to tell you something. Oh, man, no doubt, bro. And I'm a big, advo I'm a big advocate of depression. You know, I've been through my yeah. depression. Um, my depression almost killed me because yeah. I, didn't I didn't really have, you know, it took a long time for me to find somebody who was just really cared about my well-being because right. we don't really have that in our, especially Saginaw, man, because Saginaw is, yeah. it's a such a, like, place where, Everybody wearing a mask. Everybody's just faking the funk, you know what I'm saying? But when you genuine and stuff yeah. like that, you know, they laugh at you. But I'm not ashamed to admit that I was close to death. You know, I wanted to just somebody take me out of my misery, man. And and it was crazy um, going through what I went through um, to be able to bounce back and to do this and and to bring people on and to tell their stories and stuff like that. Cause so many of us out here feel like it's, it's hopeless, you know, that mm -hmm. it, there's no better tomorrow. And, right. and then I am not ashamed to, uh, to admit that. I can, I can respect that, bro. And I can like, I can, I can feel where you coming from because a lot of shit like me coming up when I was young, bro, like, my mom was, you know what I'm saying, had a, a bad drug addiction. My father was in federal prison mm -hmm. for selling drugs. Mm -hmm. And I damn near went to foster care 
but my grandmama took me. Mm -hmm. So my grandmama, she just wanted to show me, you know what I'm saying? Just wanted, she just doing shit for me, just want me to, you know what I'm saying? She felt bad for me to be growing up like that. But I took that shit and I was in the, you know what I'm saying? I was in the streets, bro, doing a lot of fucked up ass shit. You know what I'm saying? And just out here hard body. And it's that shit came from that. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I can feel where you coming from. And then it took for me to get older and start to have kids, start to, you know what I'm saying? And seeing shit and patterns and have to change, you know what I'm saying? Change my life around for the better. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of stuff, like people really don't know what you go through, bro. Like you yeah. can see a person, they can walk around and smile and be happy, but deep down inside that person hurting. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people like that around here. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people around here want to keep up their image and want to act like, you know what I'm saying? Like you say, faking the funk, bro. But deep down inside, it's a lot of people hurting. You know what I'm saying? Really hurting and going through something personal. And they just feel like keep it to themselves or, you know, either somebody going to laugh at you or somebody going to spread your business out here. And you know when people spread your business out here, they they add what they what they feel need to be said on your shit, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? So it's just like I I, can, I feel you with that, bro. And I, I'm proud to see you sitting here with us, you know, doing your thing, man. And you ain't let that get the best of you. Oh no, just bro. like with me, I ain't let I didn't let the streets and let me not having a mom or a father get the best of me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you grow up in that habitat. Like I used to, I play play sports and shit. You know what I'm saying? I look up. My grandma used to work at the post office, so she really would rarely make it to my game. So when I look in the stands, I ain't nobody there with me. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, ain't nobody there, bro. Niggas uh going with their mamas, their daddies. Some people had their mama and their daddy. I ain't had nobody. You know what I'm saying? I would get picked up by a family member or ride home, get dropped off at home with a teammate. And go under the mat and get the house key and go in the house. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's like, it's like stuff like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? It make you do certain things and make you feel certain ways. But you got to be strong and just get through that shit. Like, I, like that shit deep, bro. You know what I'm saying? So for me to be where I'm at now and how I came from that, like, that's why I said I wanted to do this and talk. Maybe somebody can hear my story or hear what I've been through and see, you know what I'm saying, hear me. And maybe I could change one. I might only change one. At least I did. You know what I'm saying? At least I made a difference, bro. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? I try, yeah. to, tell the little, I try to tell the little shorties around here every time I see them, man. You know what I'm saying? I try to speak something positive to them. They probably say, man, that nigga OG, Larry Mysterio. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't want to tell me that, man, because I'll be but giving I, them after school specials. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, don't nobody want to hear that shit. I can see them, though. Like, when I see them, they like, oh, here he come with that bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They going the other way, trying to hurry up, get around the corner. I'm like, oh, man, y'all running from me. All right, man. Like, he blowing my high. He killing my buzz and all that, man. Yeah, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? But I'm you know, <laughs> trying to tell y'all something, man, because we have been around here forever, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We done, it's us now. We are... Like you, like you say about your OG fat daddy and shit. Mm -hmm. We are, we are though. We are in their age range, and we are those guys now. You know what I'm saying? It's our time now. So we need to use it and do right, and, and, and try to help this. Try to help. You know what I'm saying? The situations around here. Yeah, yeah. Cause as as long as we keep on trying to put a band aid over these atrocities. They would never yeah. be done. It would never be fixed. And never. I try to, you know, just every day, man, I just try to just give this all that I got because I would say, um, even though I wasn't the first platform, I would say that um, I was the first to really, you know, take it to another level as far as um, getting – different people from different parts of the country and yeah. stuff and the people who um you know been a little bit of everywhere like yeah. and i would say that you know you in my top 10 of favorite episodes man <laughs> thanks I bro 
I appreciate that, man. I do. I appreciate you accepting me, reaching my hand out to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be, I always be watching, you know what I'm saying? I watch your stuff, bro, and I listen to what you're saying. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, one, the last episode I think you just had, you was talking, and I told you, like, man, you were speaking some real shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's the type of shit I'm into, and I, I read and, and I listen to. You know what I'm saying? Because that, like, to me, it helped. It helped your mind grow and it helped you grow as a person. Anything positive to me is a growth. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. anything I see positive that's going on, I want to be a part. I want to help. If I can step up and say something, I want to say something. Like I want to go to like I want to go to my son's school, and I want to you know have them have an assembly and let them sit down and let me talk to them. How we used to have them come in our school and do that with us, just random. You know what I'm saying? Just people. Oh man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying, though? Mm -hmm. This type of shit that don't happen no more, bro. We let that die. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's something like, I feel like now more than ever, they they going to listen more now than we did back then. You know what I'm saying? Like, how I, be talking about, I was just talking about the shortage and shit. They hear me. They may say I'm lame and all that, but they hear me. When they get in a the situation, they're going to be like, damn, he said this shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, cause I li cause I heard everything everybody told me, but it took me to get in trouble. But like, you know, it's like that. Yeah. Record, record, you like, damn, like they told me, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel sometimes, you. Sometimes you gotta bump, you gotta let a person bump their head, man. You can mm -hmm. tell the motherfucker don't go around that corner till they blew in the face, and they still gonna go around that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. They come back and they gonna be like you. Big ass now, you told me not to go around that motherfucking corner. <laughs> <laughs> I told your ass 10 times, don't take your ass around there. You still want to go around the damn corner. It's just, that's just something about people, bro. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? That's just, that's something about people. Some people take heed and listen. They're like, I ain't fucking with it. Some people still got to go do some shit, just to do some shit. That's just, mm -hmm. I guess that's just people. That's just nature and people, bro. I don't know. Just crazy though, man. Yeah, and I like what you said about um, grandmothers and stuff. Man, these grandmothers don't don't exist no more, man. Um, my, my she, my grandmother that raised me, she she's sick right now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, you know, what I'm saying, going to go check on her and be with her, be by Prayers. her side and stuff. Yeah, man. So mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying that's tough for me because that's like my mama, man. You know, what I'm saying yeah. my grandmama did everything she could for me bro everything she could bro and i mean everything everything bro like i'm so grateful that she was there for me because like i told you i would have been in foster care who's to say who i would have been what i could have been being abused i could have been being beaten on you know what i'm saying i could have been anything bro you never know like when that's another thing when these kids are out here like when you see child protective services come take these kids, like I be seeing girls and shit, and they get into it, and a bitch will call CPS on another bitch, and they come take that girl kids. Do you know what you're doing to them kids? You might laugh at it and think it's cool, but these kids can end up going to a family where they can starve to death. They can be constantly raped on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? They can be beaten. You know what I'm saying? This is the shit that go on, because once, cause once you go through the system of CPS and you go to that family, they gonna come check on you for like the first month, month mm -hmm. and a half. Yeah. After that, you there. You know what I'm saying? Today, until they call them, oh no, this kid ain't acting right. Then they come remove you, like you the fucking problem. And they won't even listen to what you gotta say. And it's crazy because like um it's so many of black boys that has been sexually assaulted. And it was a teacher recently that was 20 years old. She was a substitute teacher and she was having sex with a 16 year old boy. And so, hey. so a lot of people was just like, you know, dang, I wish that happened to me or dang, he lucky. And, this. and I'm like, um, what kind of shit is that? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, cause, and it's bad that nobody, um, like when, when when we're raped, nobody cares. 
Nobody sees no, that as a, you know, like as we victims. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and, <laughs> and, I, and I'm and I'm telling you, bro. Like, um, like I lost both my grandmothers too. Like, sorry to hear that. Thank you. You know, two years apart, and and it was just like the family died. Both sides of my family died when they died, and you know, as well. I got a couple cousins and stuff like that. We trying to, you know, stay locked in and stuff. But right. majority, majority of us just spread out like the 12 tribes of Israel, man. And they're doing their own thing. And, you know, and I, ne I never, you know, wanted my life to consist of just, you know, looking at your family, like your bloodline, your relatives as, you know, ops and everything like that. But... Yeah, it just, it just be like that, you know, because just man. like, because <laughs> it it yeah, because I just won't, you know, for because I'm doing this for my entire family, you know, I, I'm right. I'm trying to blow so all of us can like prosper, you know, so I can you know hire my family and you know put put some of us through college and stuff, man, because I'm making right. sure that my nieces and my nephew and my godson, because I don't have no children, but I'm making sure that they have something for college, you know, that they have some money and stuff, making sure that they become productive citizens in society. So, right. Cause we need more lawyers. We need more doctors. We need more teachers. We need more, um, counselors. You know, we got enough right. strippers. We got enough rappers. We yeah. got enough drug dealers. We got enough gang members, man. Yeah. Cause, cause I just be telling athletes yeah. too. Yeah, we got enough of that. Like, can, <laughs> can we blow up in something else, a different genre over here? Like, it's the same yeah. shit. You're right. You know, a lot of us is really intelligent, you know, mentally equipped around here, yeah. you know. And I, and I just always tell people, like, you don't need a piece of paper to prove that you're educated as well. Like, because the conversations I be having, man, like, be blowing – these college educated people away like they yeah because they because they look at me and they see this six foot five over 300 pound black dude <laughs> um <laughs> who's articulate and stuff and yeah. it blows them away you know and i tell them like i really put the work in i put many hours just reading and writing and um Look, watching documentaries, like it's so much knowledge and so much information out here, but people are so dumbed down because we Damn. can blame. <clears throat> sorry, but yeah, we can blame technology all we want, but technology is really advanced the information, mm -hmm. you know, it's just all about people's um, priorities, you know, like anything you want to find out, anything you want to learn, it's on YouTube. Yeah. So get off the rap videos, get off the um <laughs> the bullshit, the drama and this and that. Like Yeah. Because nobody is of, coming to save it, us but us. It's a it's a lot of documentaries out there too, like on Netflix and shit. Yeah. And they and they and they speak on a lot of sh a lot of shit that go on and it just I guess because that shit just people don't ain't tapped into it, it go over a lot of people's head. Yeah, and you know, I, I used to have a um, short intention span too, but I trained myself because I want better. I want more. And for you to be the, um, I would say for you to be a new creation of yourself, you're going to have to put the work in. You know what I'm saying? Nothing is given to us. You know, you got to receive it because right. I'm, I'm just not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just not the, the type to... You know, believe in that bullshit. Like, oh, um, I don't, I can't apply myself and stuff like that. But the white man, yeah, it's the white man. <laughs> but, but um, it's the black man too. It's the black. <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the black it man. Is any, it's any color if you gonna fall and be that goddamn fool. Yeah. Goddamn. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Hell but it, yeah, bro. But it's but it just takes, you know, self accountability. Cause right. You know, I ain't grew up with my dad for twenty five years. 
I could have just, you know, been blaming him for the reason why I didn't reach the pinnacle of success that I should have had if, if he was around. But, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad that nigga wasn't around anyway. At the po- you know, at the, you know, pretty much is um, what I found out. Because I'm grateful that my mom never bashed my father in front of me. You know, she just was like, you will find out later, you know. <laughs> like, you will find out. <laughs> and so when I found out, I was like, damn, like, he didn't you want to see. Up. Yeah, like, you did <laughs> so, <fuck up. laughs> Yeah, because he was just so, like, um, he was just so damaged, you know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga was in his 60s talking about some shit when he was um, 15, 16. And, and they, can't let it, they can't let that, that it's like, they can't, it's like, they can't, some of, they can't let that go, man. I don't know what it is. It's a bitterness, man. I tell my pops a thousand times, man, pops, you got to stop doing the shit you're doing. He hear me, he don't hear me. You go right back to the feds, bro. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got to, like, you got to chill out. Like I tell you, you got to chill out, man. Uh, fuck that. I'm, uh, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to get this money. So I just be like, man, shit, <laughs> uh, Then boom. Man, hello, yeah, oh, back in jail. Yeah, I mean, back in jail, man. On the... <laughs> like, man, come on, man, you down here at 80. Stop that shit. <laughs> man, it just comes to a point where, like, you got to hold people accountable. And I, I don't hold grudges. You know, I hold people yeah. accountable. Because it was funny because he told me that he couldn't be a father to me because his father wasn't there for him. But right. I was like, um... You was 35 years old when you had me. I'm your third kid. So, <laughs> you know, I was just like, uh, <laughs> like, no, I ain't trying to hear that shit. Like, cause yeah, you, right. you should do better. You know what I'm saying? If, if you felt so neglected, if you felt so abandoned, then you should have stepped up to the plate because yeah you want more for you you, you that would make yeah you right because that should have put him in the mind frame to want to do more for his you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's how it did me like not having my father and like whatever that made me want to be in my kids like way more hella more you know what i'm saying do hella mm-hmm. right by my kids because they ain't asked to be here yeah that's you know what, what yeah and that's what made me step up as an uncle because i didn't have a lot of um male positive role models in my childhood so right when i was 18 years old you know i was still a kid myself but the moment that i saw my niece man and she looked at me bro i just was i fell in love you know what i'm saying and i just wanted to just be there every second but i couldn't be you know and she's 14 about to be 15 now and I look back on everything that I sacrificed and gave up. You know, I don't regret it. And just a matter of fact, um, it just, it's a privilege. And Yeah, hell yeah, bro. You doing right, because at the end of the day, man, where we from? Again, mm-hmm. growing up here, you won't, I, won't want, I won't want none of these motherfuckers around here to influence my child. You know what I'm saying? None, yeah. Nobody. You know what I'm saying? Just like you doing with your niece, you don't want nobody else to influence your niece or be in your niece's ear around here. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like it's like 60%. I give it 60% of the motherfuckers full of shit around here, bro. And, you know what I'm saying? And then put that shit in a child ear, bro. And then you sitting here can't figure out why this child acting like this. Why this child doing this? Where are they seeing this? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And if you're not in their life and they can trust you, they're not going to talk to you. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I definitely hear you with that, bro. And that's a good thing that you're doing that. Yeah, I do my best, man, because I understand just how easy these kids can get influenced because you know they go by what they see mm-hmm. but, but what they see is an illusion it's smoking mirrors and mm-hmm. you know just because for instance you see a nigga with all the new jays a, a nice car um mm-hmm. fresh to death 
You know, he, he want to make it seem like he's successful, but that nigga, you know, living off a bitch or he's staying with his mama or he in a, somebody's basement. So mm -hmm. people, you know, go by what they see, but you know what I'm saying? It, a lot of people fooling people and I'm honest about my life, man. You know, I, I'm just getting my stuff back together. You know, I, I wanted to get my credit up. I got finally got my credit up. So that's you know, what's up. I, I finna, um, you know, I'm going <laughs> to blow up and show out. But that's, that's what's up. Don't be around here in no Billy truck, though, and shit now. Oh, no. Credit <laughs> going on the right way now. Don't step out here and do no bullshit now. <laughs> oh, no, no, man. Know, man. Hey. No, because, you know, they get their credit right, man. That's, that's, they could be ready to do some things, man. Credit get right. <laughs> I keep telling people credit is more powerful than money. Yeah. You know, people, they, they don't be hearing me, though, bro. Yeah. I tell people that all the time, nigga. You nigga, know, I, I walk around this motherfucker with a quarter in my pocket. But if I got a credit score of 800 or some old crazy shit. <laughs> you win it. get whatever the fuck I want. You win it. Because <laughs> my credit score would be anybody... Any nigga with um fifteen hundred dollars in all twenties, I, I I I won. You know what I'm saying? Your yeah. Credit, your credit score would be like in the in the three hundred, four hundreds, man, because terrible. they weren't taught, you know, financial get a literacy. It's terrible. <laughs> man, that shit used to really break my heart, bro. Like I couldn't even get like simple stuff. I couldn't even get a cell phone. I couldn't get um you know cable, um satellite, none of that. You know, yeah, but yeah, now. I'm good. That's what's up, man. Shit, I, I wish I could say that. I, my credit fucked up a little bit, you know. <laughs> oh, it's all but good, it man. Come from, it comes from making decisions. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Young and making, just making poor decisions. Not even poor decisions, but just making decisions and changing my mind and not following through with shit. You know what I'm saying? Getting, getting, the, getting the cars and shit and getting them and then like having them and it's like, fuck pandas, no. Give them they shit back and go buy some. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Shit like that. Where in the first place I should have bought it in the first place. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck I do that? You know, but just mistakes that we all make. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm work. I'm work. I'm working on that too. You know, that's another thing though that like we need to have around here. And shit though, man. Like credit seminars, shit for mm -hmm. houses. Teach a person how to. You know what I'm saying? All that. You know, that's something that I was seeing my my child too. You know what I'm saying? Teach my child how to own a piece of land. Right. Something that's gonna last. You know, something that's gonna last forever. And people think like and don't like I like everybody, like people people watching don't get it twisted. Cause I like hate when people get that shit and they just want a motherfucker to be straight up born. <laughs> we still can turn up, baby. We still can. Yeah. You know, we still can get lit, turn up, talk shit. You know what I'm saying? But let's but let's how about let's be about our business too. Mm -hmm. and, and, and trying to get this, trying to get this city back right for real, for real. So that's the thing, like people celebrating failure, man. And I'm just like, if your shit ain't together, why the fuck you outside? <laughs> like, I, you know, I don't understand that. You know, I man, um, I come from the streets, bro. Mm -hmm. I see, I come from the streets. I seen a motherfucker ain't ate in two days. As soon as they get some money, <laughs> but they want to go buy them a bottle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like nigga, you ain't ate in two days. I know you hungry, nigga. You, you just waiting for the fifth. What the fuck wrong with you, man? Hey, that's Saginaw shit for you. <laughs> yeah, bro, you right, man, and and that's and I, I'm just really glad that you know it's 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 gonna take a lot of um old habits to die, die out. Yeah. But yeah, you're right though. Um, we really give her some. Yeah, oh, I hear you. I hear you. Good. No, but we really need, just need to just stop having these big city attitudes in this small ass town. Right. You don't want to You right. You right. Because right. mm -hmm. we ain't no we ain't no better than our own backyard, and this is our own backyard. And before I help tear it down, I would try to reach out and bring it up, and you know, build it up. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't feel that way. I'm trying to get them on that page. Yeah, I just miss those basketball tournaments and the family affair and Oh nigga, you breaking up the good shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like it's crazy because hey, like two thousand babies don't know 
about the that. Victorious Believers lock ins. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, man? It was the good times, bro. Good it times. It was the good times, man. Back when back when you used to go to the parades and shit and see us swagging about high and them battling the bands and shit, man. Mm-hmm. You don't see that shit no more like that, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because we need to bring the Saginaw County Fair back to Saginaw County, man. I don't yes, sir. Way over there, like. Yes, sir. That's, Saginaw County Fair, that motherfucker in Midland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when the white folks go get the billy clubs, I should come in there acting stupid. <laughs> man, that is Don't be riding dirty. Your ass ain't going to need make it to the damn car. They done got your ass around the corner. They done whipped your ass <laughs> Oh my God, man! That come from, from being here, though. You know what I'm saying? Oh and man! We do need to bring that back, though. A lot of what you're saying, they need. We need to reverse it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Bring it back, but bring it back up to date. So people, so our, you know, our era right now and the younger era can catch on how we caught on back then. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. For real, for real. But I know a lot of people too, they saying like, well, you can't really do that. It's gonna be violence and all that. It's gonna be violence anyway, bro. Yeah, it's violence everywhere. Everywhere, and that's and that's every day. It's always some shit going on. But you can't let that de- deter you from doing some doing something good like that, bro. Bring the bringing the city back, man. And bring it back. Yeah, because um if we can go to the mall or go somewhere and get them damn cool grays, then we can do this. Yeah, we can bring it back. You know what I'm saying? Just like how how East Genesee used to be back in the day, man. You could park your car, get out, and just walk down Genesee. Mm-hmm. And it's lit up. People out there got the, you know what I'm saying? Everybody out there just, you know what I'm saying, having a good time, bro. Now, that shit died and they took that away. And that's sort of what the young people do now. Like, I kind of was like, I was, I was kind of against the way the city got after the young people where they was like, they wanted to meet under the bridge or mm-hmm. they wanted to meet in VIP parking lot and, you know, just chill. You don't see them. They don't have no place to go, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So instead of pulling up, man, security guys, oh, we going to shut it down and the police going to be there. Instead of institutionalizing them, you should have helped with them, and you could have built with it. Okay, well, if y'all going to be out here, then we're going to have squad cars out here. You know what I'm saying? Or something. You know what I'm saying? And let them do them as long as they don't get to fighting or shooting. Fuck it. Let them do them. Yeah. We in Michigan. We illegal. And, and niggas, if you got common sense, drink your liquor in your motherfucking car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real, for real. Instead of pushing them, instead of pushing them off and they ain't got nowhere to go. You know what I'm saying? That's that's kind of fucked up when that's how Saginaw used to be anyway. You know what I'm saying? Every, every weekend, like my pops and my uncles and them would tell me, nigga, every weekend, boy, Jitter C used to be lit up. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say. You can park your car at, uh, park your car by T and M or by KFC right there. And this shit around all the way down past Rib Shack, like the whole strip will be banging, bro. Banging. This was every weekend. Oh yeah, Potter Street too. You know, yeah, right there. Yeah. 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 Train yeah, station, that my, old train station and stuff. Yeah. My pops, that's where my pops had his first club, uh club four by the four by four club. That was my pops club. He owned it that. Right there on Potter Street. Oh next shit. To the, next to the old uh Elks building. Damn. Shit. Our peoples probably know each other, man, because you know, my grandfather was uh, Mr. Brown, man. He owned that fish market on James. That was my grandfather. Okay. Yeah, I used, oh. to, work. Yeah, I used yeah. to work there. I used to work there. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he, your grandfather know, you know, my pops and them, the O'Briens, Rodney O'Brien and them, stay right there on, right there on, on uh, Lapeer across the street from Morley School. Okay. That was my grandma, Miss Pearl House right there. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So you, yeah, hell yeah. So I'm pretty sure that you know they came to that fish market over there because we used to be, he used to be over there everywhere. Mama, yeah. uh, what was what was the name of what was the name of that right there? That restaurant on Potter Street, Mama Lily's. Mm-hmm. 
you know, yeah, you know, I, I remember all that, you know what I'm saying, as a child coming up and stuff. I remember all that. Man, it's just the the nostalgic of this episode, man. You know, it's so hard like to, you know, keep keep a straight face, man, but it just makes you want to cry on how much this city has deteriorated. Die. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It died, bro. Yeah. It died. Like, from what we talk about, it, people watching it, they probably like, damn, they bringing up some good old days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, like, people like, damn. And then, to think about it now, motherfuckers sit back like, damn, they damn never want to cry, bro, like you said, bro. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker, man. Just to ride through, bro, and then just to ride through the urban area, bro, and just see the gaps and just driveways in the field. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, mm -hmm. there used to be a house right here. You know what I'm saying? To see that, that shit look terrible, bro. And it's like, everybody around here, you know, niggas talking that hood shit, but you don't even know this nigga. They tearing the hood down right in your face. Man, you ain't lying. And... Tear Tearing your hood down to the ground, bro. A lot of people from, from the hood and from, you know what I'm saying, the shit, they childhood house ain't even there no more, bro. They shit a field now. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because if you do eventually get successful, you, you got nothing to show um, people like where you came where from you came or where you went to school at or anything. None of that, bro. You might come back and you might be like, yeah, this was the neighborhood I stayed in. That motherfucker might be a parking lot. You know what I'm saying? With a, like, it might be a motherfucking parking lot in the Popeyes. You know what I'm saying? You didn't, for real, though, bro. Like, this was, this was right here. This was the night. This was the block. This was the neighborhood. This motherfucker Popeyes, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's. Uh. And, we got, and we got, but we, and we got our young people dying over that shit, though. Fighting and dying over that shit right now, but you got the but you got the you got the motherfucking man tearing that bitch down. Right. You know what I'm saying? Us, if we if if we was really into that and nigga really cared about that neighborhood, when that when no when no motherfuckers show up to come tear some shit down, we pulling their ass out them big cats and whooping their ass to tell them to get the fuck from over here. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't tearing down our community. You know what I'm saying? If you really care about the neighborhood. If you got if you got enough balls to go shoot a motherfucker that ain't from your neighborhood, you should have enough balls to snatch that hunky out that damn thing and whoop his ass and tell him to get the fuck from over here, bro. You ain't tearing down my neighborhood. Yeah, that's what they did, you know. And, and that's the thing, like, like back in the day, like when we integrated into their communities, mm -hmm. they all would join together they, and they benefit. wasn't having that shit. Well, no. They wasn't having that shit. Hell no. And then the no, ones that was around, I can remember like uh my homeboy, like his pops was saying, because I got a homeboy, he white, and his dad used to say, we couldn't come across the bridge. Like West Genesee Bridge. Mm -hmm. They mamas and they and they family them told them, don't never cross that bridge. You know what I'm saying? Like we was not, they was not allowed to even come across the bridge, bro. Cause we, you know, cause us, 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 us was over that bridge. And the same thing went for us as black. Some of us wouldn't cross that bridge and go over there. Mm -mm. Then we running our ass right back across that bridge. <laughs> Man, it's like, A lot. You, it's crazy cause I, I don't mean to cut you off, but. Go ahead, bro. A lot, a lot of people don't even remember or don't even know that um, Compton, was a all white community and and they don't even know about sundown towns either bro and when i when i talk about these type of things they think it's like a myth mythical um story but these are mm -hmm. true like these was actually um towns where you couldn't be caught after dark or otherwise you was killed so mm -hmm. what i'll be explaining to people about like our people went through a lot you know just the stuff that we can do now, you know what I'm saying? We can like walk into a, like a restaurant and be seated. Like you know that you have to go through the back door just to get um food or you know, you have to have a um green book. 
in order to know where to go and know where um you right like interstates to go otherwise and, shit, and a lot of people don't know nigga that shit was here in Saginaw. yeah <laughs> yeah they, they don't they don't discuss the the north racism like the south mm -mm. it was here it <laughs> yeah. definitely was here uh-huh it was just it went with it being here it was more so because it was a few whites that was you know cool and, and and was down but then you had the ones that was straight up and then it would be like the motherfuckers that didn't like black people would pretend to like black people and put you in a bad situation and fuck you up you know what i'm saying it was different here versus down there they was just straight up like you knew not like fuck a nigga you knew not to have your ass around there up north it was different because you had whites that cared and you had it mixed in with the you know what i'm saying it's hard to tell you know what i'm saying who who is actually straight and who is actually you know bad and that was here that was here a lot too you know what i'm saying like hell yeah man I, like i got a lot of stories my granddad used to tell me about here and how the white people used to run them out the neighborhood and throwing rocks at them and shit and get the fuck on from over here and you know what i'm saying all that mm -hmm. type of shit bro it went on even when you go in them hospitals bro or you go in the courthouse just look up there at all them fucking pictures all them motherfuckers is white <laughs> <laughs> that shit ain't start getting black to the 90s nigga. <laughs> just look at that shit just look at that shit boy that motherfuckers white as hell tail in the motherfuckers <laughs> Suzanne Zunderberg, white as hell. <laughs> oh my God, man, I'm dead. <laughs> and I can't even say that you lying, man. You ain't never just, you ain't never just been to the hospital. Look up on, they got, they got all them pictures on the wall. You see, motherfucking two hallways of honkies, and then. The end hallway is turning into niggas now. Like we let the niggas in. Oh we my let, god. They let us in in the nineties. <sighs> they let us in. They, they let us in that motherfucker in the nineties. You start seeing black motherfuckers mixed in with white <laughs> motherfuckers. But most of that shit from the motherfucking early twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies, white motherfuckers. <sighs> <laughs> man, I'm about to overheat. <laughs> I'm about to overheat. Oh I'm my funny god! Right, I ain't gonna lie, but I keep it real though. But I do, I do crack my shit. But I keep it real. You know what I'm saying, nigga? And, 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 and niggas don't even be noticing that shit. I be mm -hmm. noticing shit like that though. Man, I even been like that when I was a kid. Like, mama, look at all them. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, like that shit is crazy, bro. And then when they put up and then when they put us in that position, they go after the ones who ain't even fuck the they own race, bro. And that shit be sad to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? To see them get in there and knowing, nigga, especially here in Saginaw, knowing that we out here in the streets, we knowing that, you know, that's such and such nephew. That's such and such, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they out here doing the worst or the worst. You know what I'm saying? But you treat them motherfuckers like that. That shit crazy, bro. That shit is wild, man. Man, that, that really just really just <laughs> fucked me up, man. Cause I work at a hospital. <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Hey, I tell oh. I'm gonna come on, I'm gonna keep it real with you, bro. Shit. Hey, it's all good, man. Like, <laughs> I, oh, man. And, and they probably out there laughing too, bro. Like, damn, this nigga for real, though. Like, <laughs> nigga ain't never stopped and thought about that shit, though, bro. Yeah, it's just one of those, it's just one of those, like, thoughts that just, like, it's it's funny, but it's devastating. Like, dang, like, he right, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, bro, shit. And if a mo and if a nigga did have a job or something back then, the motherfuckers was doing the worst of the worst. They was the janitor cleaning up shit and piss. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Or housekeeping, or housekeeping one of them motherfuckers on that wall. They was housekeeping they shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, bro, it's so much bullshit here. Like I remember, 
I had got in a little trouble and shit, called a damn case. I go pay and get me a lawyer. And we talk about the state boys. He told me that here alone in Saginaw is eight state police officers and they corrupt. And he said, by law, I can't tell you their name or give you no information, but I can tell you that it's eight officers that's corrupt. Man. Like, that shit blew my mind, bro. Like, really blew my mind. But it really made me check myself because it's like, I knew I wasn't tripping. You know what I'm saying? I knew I wasn't tripping. Like, and this shit, this shit real, though, bro. Like, for real, for real. Lawyer sat there and told me. It's eight officers. Another, and my lawyer was not a nigga. He was white, bro. Mm -hmm. Sat right there and told me that, bro. Right there. Like, nigga, it's eight officers, and they all corrupt. They all in the, they all in the, all in the bullshit. So that's I why I be like a lot of shit that happened to people, and you know what I'm saying. I I, I listen to their stories. And some people just be straight up guilty, like, yeah, nigga, you did that shit, you was wrong. Some people, I feel like they ain't did shit, bro. Just wrong place, wrong time, wrong officer, bro. Yeah. You know what it's, I'm saying? Yeah, and that's also just with, um, I tell and try to explain to people is that regardless of what you feel about me, if this was motherfucking 50 years ago, you will be considered colored. You will be considered a Negro like me. Yeah. You will have to yeah. oblige by the same Jim Crow laws like I have to. Yeah. So what makes you even better than me? What makes <laughs> you think that you um more superior than me if we all fighting against white supremacy? Right. And then saying and then it's crazy, right? Because you say back then. They don't even understand that right now they actually in the same predicament but they like strings on the puppet mm -hmm. yeah and as soon as you and as soon as you soon as you fuck up and you and you uh try to go against me in a way or a manner that they don't they don't like snip snip you fall right in the bucket with us mm -hmm. now you back with us and you want us to accept you no oh, man fuck you man you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? But that's how it is, though. You feel me? As soon as you, like, they think, like, they put them on that pedestal, they think, like, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Black person get to thinking, oh, yeah, they better than the next because they got this type of job and they doing this. But really, the white man over that, and as soon as they fuck up or do something that compromise the white man, he going to throw your ass back where you came from. And now you back with the same people who you look at like we was shit. Yeah, man, you ain't lying, because, like, it was a time where, like, a dentist, a lawyer, a doctor, pastor, all mm -hmm. live on the same block. Mm-hmm. Because all we had was each other, and that's why the unity was genuine, because all we had was each other. That's but now, <laughs> But now, you know, we only come together. It's when a white police officer kills one of us. That's the only time we come together. But right. when we kill each other, oh, nothing. Pick a side. <laughs> yeah. You need to say free or RIP. Pick a side. And you write about that because, like, growing up back in the day, nigga, you get your ass whooped by your neighbor. You know what I'm saying? In the black, you know what I'm saying? Like, you get fucked up in the black neighborhood doing some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And you go home and tell your mama, and your mama be like, you did what? And you'll get your ass whooped again by your mama. Mm -hmm. It ain't like that no more. You know what I'm saying? You touch a motherfucking kid, now nah, they're going to be about to, they're going to fucking kill you. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, and another thing, we got to stop taking that check, man. <laughs> I'm so sick of these so called. Butter biscuit eaters, dog, like, because that just shows everybody that they don't value our lives, man. We got to stop that shit and go.
go to trial. I would respect if the person goes to trial off, you know, off and off their family member and that person get found not guilty, at least they try to get justice. But right. But you know when somebody get get that check and then they dialogue is just um scripted. You know, they sound like all lives matter and this and that, like Yeah. yeah. It makes me cringe, man. Like I hate Cause that's just you know, that just shows like okay, well they they gonna forgive us anyway. They gonna you know, say all of us matter anyway. They ain't gonna hold us accountable, so we can keep doing what we doing. And that's terrible, man. And that's kill <clears throat> that's killing us off slowly, man. You right about that though. Taking that check, boy. Taking that dive. Fuck that, <clears throat> man. For real, bro. And but it's people like us, it's men like us that's trying to make a difference. We're trying to change. Um, it's gonna take us, it's not gonna take um people in the township to rejuvenate our surroundings, yeah, our surroundings, yeah. but us and. Yeah. <clears throat> And just, you know, we just got to take back our streets. We got to take back our homes. We got to take back our kids, this this mm-hmm. community, man, because, you know, we, 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 we can't allow the, the single mothers to be the leaders of our community. We got to take back our communities, you know, right. slowly but surely, man. But You're right, but, bro. But, yeah, man, everything about to die on my end. But man, we gonna have to do this <laughs> again. Mine too, bro. Yeah, I ain't even checking. We gonna do this again, checking. man. I really, I really enjoyed this, bro, brother, oh, man. Yeah. We gotta do this again. Definitely, definitely, my man. Definitely, man. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely always here, bro. Always willing to talk, even if you holla at me. You know what I'm saying? Behind the scenes, whatever, bro. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you for having me on here and let me speak out and speak my mind like that. Man, no problem, you know G, man. Anytime, I man. I appreciate that, bro. Man, no problem, man. Anytime you want to come back, man, just let me know. All right, for sure, man. We'll, kick, we'll stay in touch. I'll stay in touch with you, too, man. All right, bro. Same here. Yep, yep. Appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Have a good night. You, too. All right, bro. Peace. All right, all y'all out there, too, y'all. Take care. Peace all right. out. <laughs> Peace.